All right, this is Anthony Smoke, Data Plus Analytics. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm going to show you here first. So I'm in Excel and I have this, uh, this data set. I'm going to show you that I've got a hundred rows in here, as you can see. And column wise, I go out to column S, right? So let's say I do something like this. Let's say I delete uh, so many rows. We're going to go ahead and delete these. And let's say I delete so many columns, right? Let's go ahead and delete these as well. All right. So now I can do this. I can go here to data and I can say refresh. And magically, my 100 rows come back. And then I'm out to column S again. So how am I doing this? How am I doing this refresh? I am connected to SQL Server within Excel. So I've got a direct connection to SQL Server within Excel um, that allows me to always refresh that data in Excel. Uh, I can copy it out to another sheet and do what I need to do, but I don't have to export it out into a CSV, then load it into Excel or control copy uh, out of SQL Server. If I got a million rows and 50 columns, right, that's going to blow up my clipboard, right? So I want to do that direct connection. I'll show you how to set this up coming right up. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit subscribe here on YouTube. As always, if you learn something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at Anthony Smokes. Okay, so the use case for this type of refresh is going to be for ad hoc purposes. If you need to easily refresh your data in Excel for ad hoc purposes only, do not use this to put production, um, you know, worksheets uh, out there for people to consume. I'm talking to you, financial analysts. I know you love your Excel, and I know that you uh, like to take manual inputs from any and everywhere. So don't do it, uh, financial analysts. I, I'm just, I'm just picking with you. But uh, let me show you how we set this up. I'm going to go into SQL Server. And so I'm using Wide World Importers DW. This is a sample database uh, from Microsoft that you can, uh, yeah, you can do a Google search on this and, and import this into, um, into SQL Server. But I'm taking a look at this fact.order table. You can see I have so many columns here. And so if I do a select star, if you know your SQL, I'm just saying select uh, all the columns and rows from uh, fact.order, we'll execute this. And let's take a look at my row count, 231,412 rows. So let's say I needed these uh, in Excel. And then let's say next week when IT refreshes this table, I need to refresh this into Excel because maybe I have some ad hoc process set up where I reference this data. Again, not production. Okay, so now let's go into uh, Excel. I've got a blank Excel here. First of all, let me get, sorry, let me go back here. Let me just show you what um, what version of SQL Server I'm using here. So SQL Server Management Studio version 18.11.1. So you can see all that good stuff here. And now let me go into a blank copy of Excel. And so we're going to uh, be on the data uh, pane here, the data ribbon. I'm going to go to from database, from SQL Server database. And then it's going to ask for uh, the server name. And so where do I get that server name? So what you can do, if you don't know, if you have access to SQL Server, great. So you can, I'm just going to go here to connect to a database engine, and it's going to bring up my local uh, server name. I can copy that. Um, if you need to reach out to your uh, DBA if you're at work and ask for the, um, the server name, if you need to set this up. So we're going to go in here and say server. And then for the database, I'm using uh, wide, uh, wide World Importers DW. So let's go ahead and put that in here. 
And then let's not mess with the uh, advanced options. You can put a SQL statement in here. So we'll come back to this. But for now, let's just go ahead and keep the default options that are selected. I'm going to say OK. And then it's going to work its magic here. So OK, so I get the navigator. It's going to work its magic here in a second after I select uh, fact.order. And you'll see it gives me a little preview of the data. I can check it out. It's going to show like these uh, these value value fields, but don't worry. It should come in correctly. It will come in correctly. If I hit transform data, that's going to bring up Power Query where I can do some transformations. Again, I'll show you a little bit more about that later. But for now, let's just hit load. Now it's going to work its magic. It's going to create a, uh, a connection, a query. And you can see it's loading rows. And we should have 231,000. 412, just like we had uh, in SQL Server. So we can confirm that. I'm going to go all the way down. You can see I've got 231,412 in the order key. That's good. So let's, uh, let's go back up. And then I come over to column S. My lineage key is the last column. So that looks correct. So now I have this data in here, and that's good. So I can, I can take this data, I can, I can copy it somewhere, but let's, what do I need to do if I want to edit the connection? What do I need to do if I need to edit the connection? Let me show you that here in a second. It, it seems like it would be straightforward, but Microsoft makes it a little hard to find. So I'm gonna show you that here in a second, stick around. Okay, so uh, let's assume that you are SQL savvy or SQL savvy like I am, and you need to make uh, some edits to the query um, in SQL. So let's go back over to the database, and instead of pulling in all 231,000 uh, rows, I'm going to run this query. It gives me select top 100 from the table um, between this date for the order date key. That's uh, January um, 1st. 2013 uh, to January 10th, 2013. And I just need these 100 rows, right? I want to edit the query uh, with this SQL. So how do I do that uh, in, in Excel? So first thing I'm going to do, well, let me show you the wrong way first, the, the way that uh, I assumed you would do it. So let's go ahead and uh, queries and connections. Let's bring that up. And then you can select, um, let's go to... Uh, properties and let's hit this right here query properties and you'll see there's a definition and there's text here select star from fact uh, order so great but I can't edit this text I can't even hit this button this is grayed out so that's that's very annoying so that's why you follow me so you get these little tidbits how do you make that uh, that change right because this seems like the intuitive way to do it properties on the connection. No, Microsoft makes it uh, a little tougher for you to find. That's why you're here. So let's go ahead and, and cancel out of this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click here. I'm going to say edit. And that's going to bring me into Power Query, right? And so first thing I'm going to do on the source, I'm going to select this gear. That's the key, this gear right here. And if I go into Advanced Options, you'll see there's an area for my SQL statement. Great. So I can come in here. I'm going to copy that and paste it into here. Say OK. And it's going to crank for a little bit. And you'll see I've got all of my columns with the data that comes in. And do I have my 100 rows? If I scroll all the way down, I've got 100 rows. So that is how you edit the, uh, the SQL statement um, applied to the query. It's kind of hidden in here. You have to know, like, hey, um, let me hit this gear. So I don't know why they make it this difficult to, to find out, but, but there it is. And so let's get rid of this navigation step. And so what we can do now, let's close and load. And it's going to load it into here. I've got 100 rows loaded. And if I get rid of this, you'll see if I scroll all the way down, whoops, going too far. I guess I could hit control end. I've got my 100 rows. Come back up. All right, go over to S, column S, lineage key. I have everything refreshed. So that is how you 
edit the SQL um, in the connection that we set up. And just to show you, let's say if I go in here, I select everything and I hit delete, it's going to, you know, ask me, do I want to delete the associated query with the data? And I'm going to say no, right? I'm just deleting the data. And so what I can do, I can say refresh and it's going to bring all of my data back again, go down. I got my hundred uh, rows, come back up. Everything is here out to uh, out to column S. So I can delete things here and always have it refreshed, even if I change values. So if I want to make another copy of this data, I'm going to hit Control A here and make sure that I got the uh, the column headers in here too. So I hit Control A to to copy everything or to select everything, I should say. I'm going to hit Control C, and if I go to a new sheet and just paste or I could just say control V, let's just do that. Um, I have a copy of the data, but when I hit queries and connections, you'll see it makes another query. So this can also be refreshed. This is not what I want, right? I just want, I'm just gonna control Z out of this, gets rid of that query. What I need to do if I want a copy that's not connected to a query, I'm just gonna, again, hit control C, and then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna paste special values, does that give me my headers? It does. And so now I have a copy of that data without it being connected to a query. So if I close this and then I'm going to hit Control A in here, hit Control A, then Control T, that's going to ask me, do I want to create a table? I do. I have a table. And so if I go over here, if I go back to data and hit queries and connection, uh, that table is not associated with a query like my main copy is. So I have this version that can always be refreshed and then I can copy that into a different sheet where I can do modifications and whatever I do here sticks, right? Um, if I refresh, it does not affect this sheet. So you can do your modeling here, you can do your, you know, whatever you need to do here, and you always get that fresh copy in this sheet. So very handy. Um, again, the use case here, if you need to get that data out of SQL Server without the hassle of creating a CSV, importing it into uh, Excel, you need that refreshed data. And again, we're not using this for production purposes. Looking at you financial analysts, do not distribute uh, Excel workbooks as your production process. This is for ad hoc modeling only. So if you're a financial analyst, you're mad at me, go ahead and uh, let me know in the comments. I'm here for the, I'm here for the smoke. <laughs> I want all the smoke. I'm gonna have any smoke. But anyway, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hope you appreciated this tip. It's just uh, one of those little things, editing the sequel that's a little hard to find that you may have to uh, you know, do some research to find, but that is why you follow this channel. So again, this is Anthony Smoke. Hope you learned something from this lesson here. Get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.